So let's chat with Chachu. Do you know why? Because I promised him to come back. This this show, we are going to see the man Chachu. We are going up close and personal with my good brother here. And uh, you know, you all know that the verdict is coming out soon. Uh, I think in a few days' time. After the verdict, he has promised to come back. And you know, yeah, so come around. And, and you know the name of that show? It won't be Chatu Chacho. It will be Chachu in the witness box. <laughs> <laughs> Chachu in the box, man. <laughs> uh, I will be cross examining him, but, but that's, that's part two of the show. This one, let's Chachu Chachu. Chachu must send one more. Welcome to the show, man. Thank Just love for you one more time. Thank you. Thank you. Chachu. By the way, what a wonderful setting you have Thank for you. this show. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, I feel at ease. It's a haven. And I'll be back. You'll be back. Put your hands in your <laughs> Oh, that is fantastic. Well, welcome to the show. And um, I'm, I'm sure you heard my introduction. And before I start anything, I'm going to say, Christian, you're crazy. You have Chachu on the set. You ask him solid, heavy test. You're going to ask him about uh, Osu Market. <laughs> but that's something. <laughs> <laughs> this night market story that I heard. <laughs> is it no, true? But, but that, that's... That's the reality of the life of a bachelor boy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Osu Night Market is actually a very important location for ensuring one's, uh, you know, well-being. Oh, wow. <laughs> I used to go to Osu Night Market. In fact, I have a favorite Kenke seller in the Osu Night Market who I go to regularly. And she has fantastic fish as well. Her wow. fish... Is really so there's a specific seller that you go to? I'm telling you. And so naturally, and I don't know why you're getting into my very personal life, <laughs> just, just because we're up close and personal. <laughs> but it is a fact that in order to impress some people, uh -huh. I have taken them along to go and see this wonderful kinky and fish person. At the, at the night market? At the Osu night market. But what is even more amazing about it, and I think in the end, this is what saved the situation for me. Apart from the wonders of her food, I got to find out that this lady, through her night market work, had educated her daughter. And one day when I went there, she actually introduced her daughter to me and said, she's in Legon, you know. And maybe by now she's even a lawyer. Really? <laughs> She may well be the next Supreme Court Justice. <laughs> <laughs> but, but truly, I, I mean, I, I, I've always found Osu Night Market a very refreshing spot for meeting my culinary <laughs> <laughs> expectations. So, so I try to impress some people also by taking them there. But let's not get too much into let's that. Is she still around? I'm wondering. Is you know... Unfortunately, I've lost track a little bit because okay. these days, not just because of Corona and so on, but being a, you know, no longer a bachelor boy, yes, 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 yes. I now have home cooked food. Yes. And, and frankly, even when I was in prison, I was getting home cooked food every single day <laughs> because my wife <laughs> that you that I have to eat home cooked food. Even, even in prison. I, I, I will be getting to that. We'll be getting to that. My shirt's a lot, man. <laughs> I, when I heard the Namaka story, I, I, just, I just, I was like, so, I don't know. <laughs> Blown up. Was, hey. Actually, it's not only Osuna. I used to go to Achimota as well. Achimota, oh, really? the there's also a nice market there where the kinke and you is kinke very kinke good. You like kinke pie? <laughs> <laughs> well... If I don't have a play and fetri <laughs> then Genke is a good enough <laughs> substitute. <laughs> Und understandable. So is that that Osu na market or Achimota na market? I think Osu is my favorite, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. Osu is my favorite. Wow. And, um, I, no, I, Osu na market, Charlie, you kind of... Because long ago, long ago, back in the day, mm -hmm. it was my joint too, man. There you go. There, oh. But you didn't confess that earlier. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't go to the Kenke stand, though. You know where I went? No. Domedo. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's on the right hand side. <laughs> oh, you know that. <laughs> oh, wow. That is great, man. But honestly, you know, uh, it's very interesting, you know, because um, 
when when people are in the limelight like, like you and you know it's hard to imagine them again as oh people who do what normal people do you know so in fact when i heard that osuna market was your hang up eh, you know it was it was refreshing to know <laughs> but now you now you eat at home yes good now for you at home. <laughs> chachu welcome welcome again Thank and uh, we, we say let's chat with chachu we are just shooting the breeze mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. there, there's so much we can say about you and so much we can talk about so let, let's just go man you know I mean, I started off by acknowledging the beauty of your surroundings and so on. And I think that is very important, you know, for me, mm. because one has to acknowledge, you know, what God has put us in, mm -hmm. you know, the setting that God has put us in. Mm. And, and I find that I really am excited every time I, it's, it's like David in, you know, Psalm 19, the heavens declare the glory, you know, of God. Mm. And, and he always has to give an acknowledgement mm. to, to, to God in terms of when he sits at, or when he meditates or, you know, on his surroundings and so on. So I'm feeling quite excited not just to be here, but I'm also feeling quite excited to be able just to chat, as you said, in a kind of normal way. Yeah, Maybe people are yeah. too used to seeing me mm -hmm. sort of in my wig and gown yes. and all that sort of stuff, <laughs> you know. Or some people have even been used to seeing me just in a lecture room, mm -hmm. you know, in the past and so on. But, um, you know, I'm kind of normal. Chachu without the wig and gown, man. Chachu, bear Chachu. I stripped him naked. <laughs> Let's let's go back a little bit, um, Tachu, because um, from little readings I've done, I hear you are like a uh, whisk kid as a in primary school. Where do you go? Um, as a you know, I started off in Mrs. Sam's. Mrs. Sam's was like a, a nursery. Well, not nursery, but it was uh, an early school uh, kind of context mm. in which. You know, I, I started off. I, I, I've even forgotten one important thing. Before I went to Mrs. Sam, there was Aditrom. Aditrom was uh, a real nursery school. Mm. And once my older brother started going to school, I would follow him okay. to school. Sometimes, you know, just in just system, in exactly, class with him. Exactly. I'm going with my older uh, brother. Exactly. And so that's how I really started. But Mrs. Sam's was where we all really started, you know, proper school, as it were. And, um, you know, it was, it was an interesting place. But very quickly, we moved to Accra Newtown Experimental mm -hmm, School. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's where we had a wonderful headmaster, Mr. Fuso Apia. I mean, you know, he spoke so well. And I, I remember all that from those mm -hmm. early years mm -hmm. because I think that was part of what really impressed me. We had mm -hmm. a headmaster who you could see as a model, you know, the way he spoke, his stature, his bearing. And I remember he had his own children in the school. But unfortunately for those children, he was so hard on them. Really? In order to make the point to us, the rest of us, that <laughs> we better take... I this to my children. What about you all? <laughs> so it was a good discipline, you know, mm, proper... Mm. Equiapim Presbyterian mm -hmm. discipline, you know. I can imagine. And so that was Accra Newtown Experimental School. And that, that was very formative for me but because uh, yeah, but I made a lot of, you know, friends, a lot of, you know, people with whom I've grown up mm. into fancy payment. This is what I find interesting right here. Um, as a kid entering school at that level, mm -hmm. some of the things that impress you will probably be uh, the King Kessel. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, they're, they're really basic things mm -hmm. but you at that time was looking at this headmaster and that was sort of no that really, really? it was unforgettable for me because wow. um i've had in my experience of school headmasters who made that impression like in fans film you know fl bartels mm. you know that kind of stature mm. the way they spoke and so on and indeed from that early age i was struck of what appear he spoke excellent english wow and Accra Newtown Experimental was one of these experimental schools where 
you were not allowed to speak local languages, you know, because we wanted to bring all the English in yes. us, you know. And, um, and, and I think it was just because, you know, a lot of the work that was done in the educational system was in English mm -hmm. anyway. So I mm -hmm. think people wanted mm -hmm. to ensure that mm -hmm. there was a good grounding mm -hmm. in, in English. And so having a headmaster like that, and then there were excellent teachers, by the way, mm. um, that, that I also remember from those days. In class six, we had a fantastic teacher. She was, she had, she had been a student in Wesley Girls. I mean, where else? Mm. And, uh, <laughs> and I think it was soon after Wesley Girls that she came to teach us in class six just when we we're going to take common entrance. That was the thing about experimental mm -hmm, school. Mm -hmm, you took mm -hmm. common entrance in class. Yeah. Six. Before we get there, yes. let me really ask this. Because um, I, I hear in your primary school, you were like, every year they promoted <laughs> like two classes ahead <laughs> of, of your class. Well, Is that a class? Why they, don't come no, no, no. I, I, think, I think actually it was, it was really one, <laughs> one major promotion. <laughs> From class three, I was jumped to class four. Okay. So jo then I joined, you know, my older brother and other people okay. from class four. And then class four, we went on to class five and six, where we took common entrance. That was the whole, so instead of six years, which was what the rest mm -hmm. of the, I did five years did five. For, for that mm -hmm. uh, experimental project. But you, you did a common entrance as nine, uh, you were nine years old? I did common entrance, actually, I was eight at the time. I, I turned nine before I went to Infantspeak. But when I did common entrance, I was actually eight years old. And, <laughs> and, and you know, I think that um, recently uh, one of my contemporaries told me a story which I had long forgotten. The people in Fanspim, after they had marked our papers and so on, they mm. invite us for interviews. So we were all invited for interviews at Row Road. In those days, they used to call it Row Road School, Kimbu, Kimbu School. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we all were there for interviews. Then, in the case of Fui and myself, they actually asked us to do a written exam again because apparently they didn't believe <laughs> that we had been the people who had taken those written really? exams you, and so on. So, it was, it was so that they impressive. actually they actually had us sit down and write and do written exams again before the oral interviews. And I, I had forgotten this until one of my contemporaries reminded me that you people, the rest of us who were doing oral interviews, you they you sat you down <laughs> to write your exam again. So indeed we we wrote again, and so I guess they were satisfied yeah. that we were the people <laughs> who had done the government. <laughs> <laughs> now that they have the evidence. <laughs> they have the evidence. <laughs> yes, and, oh. and so that's how, so I got on Fun Swim in January 1960. And you were nine years old? Yes, I, was, I turned nine in October. Okay. And so January, I was, um, I was in Fun Swim, you know, little boy. And the beauty of being that little is that everybody protects you and takes care of you. So mm, none of this bullying mm, stuff, you know, that they do on other people. So there's a lot of bullying, but... A lot of bullying, but, but you're you, so small, they didn't they say, touch oh, they, me. This guy, you know, all the seniors, you. you know. And the, the other aspect of it was that in those days, I was quite asthmatic. And I still am asthmatic, but in those days, one of the asthma medications was asthma cigarettes. Asthma cigarettes, which you inhale, and that sort of helps clear, you know, the, mm. the, the system for asthma. Really? So I became a favorite, even to some of the, you know, the, the bad boys in school, because they saw that I was the only person who was allowed to smoke, <laughs> officially. So occasionally, they would come for a stick of my asthma cigarette in the hope that if they are caught smoking, they will say that I am also... <laughs> And just like Chuchikata is really? allowed me to. So I'm you allowed. liked it and all, and it's actual yes, smoke? Yes, actual smoke. Really? And I was the only person that had authorization to, to smoke. To smoke in school. You became their friends. I became their friends. Yeah, absolutely. They, wow. they needed my asthma cigarettes to show that <laughs> they also had asthma. <laughs> you know. But. It was, it was, again, it was a, a fantastic situation for me because I was mentored by, you know, 
older people. I mean, there's seniors that I remember who took care not only of me in terms of my health situation, mm. but were interested in my development. In a, in a way, I guess they were impressed too that such a small, tiny little person. <laughs> what was the age group, the average age group of the... Of, about, of, 12. About, about 12. About 12, yeah. yeah. My, my mate turned out to be about 12, somewhere even a little older. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. But about 12, but I was 9, Fui was mm. 11, so, you know, he too was So younger. you're this cute little boy. <laughs> <laughs> that everybody wanted to take care of. <laughs> and that saved you from the bullies. It saved me. Plus your, 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 your my asthma <laughs> secrets also. And, and you know, I mean, the, 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 the thing that I was pointing out about being mentored. We had, you know, prefects in my house then. I was in Bama House. I mean, prefects like Joy Atta, Kobe Hunter, and people. I mean, they, they were concerned that this little boy should really begin to develop mm. the capabilities mm. that he was at Infant Spring mm. School for. Because, I mean, they knew that, you know, that's the school. I mean, it's not a village, it's a school. <laughs> it's a school. <laughs> <laughs> and so they really wanted me to fit in very well, not to be, you know, bothered and, you know, affected by my health situation and so on. And I remember, I mean, sometimes when I really had to get to hospital, I had to get some attention because of asthma. Some of these seniors would actually take me wow. to Cape Coast mm -hmm. Hospital. I remember a senior, mm -hmm. Mate, you know, and I remember it so well because by the second term, my health was a little bit of an issue and the headmaster, the great F.L. Bartels at that time, yes. thought that I couldn't make it. So he actually called for my father and had a discussion, a serious discussion with my like, father. Like you should be sent home? Mm, yeah, absolutely. He said, you know, I'm suggesting that this, you know, little boy should stay at home for one year mm -hmm. and come back after the, after the year. So this was my headmaster and my father conspiring against me. <laughs> and so when I was informed by my father, I said, no way, I'm going to continue. <laughs> <laughs> you wow. know, I'm going to continue because, you know, in 1960, there were actually two terms for the, because the school year changed to September. So we're going to go into Form 2 in October. Mm. And so, you know, they were concerned that I wouldn't make it. You know, if I just continued and went into Form 2, second term, I'd been in hospital on and off and so on. So, you know, these were legitimate concerns mm -hmm. of these, mm -hmm. you know, grown-up mm -hmm. people who cared about me, but I defied them. And I decided that I would go on to Form 2, you know. And, and I remember telling the story to F.L. Bartels on his 98th birthday. You know, he was visiting Ghana when he, he turned 98. Wow. And a number of, uh, you know, old school mm -hmm, uh, people mm -hmm. had a, a lunch for him. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were all supposed to say a few words. And, and my few words to him were just to remind him that I have the distinction of having defied him, him. and my father. <laughs> him <laughs> and my father. <laughs> Did he remember? Of course he remembered. No, he memory. remembered. He remembered because remember, yeah. he, he also was, like I said, one of those people that really made an impact on me because, mm, mm. I mean, you know, F.L. Bartels, not only did he speak English with, you know, I mean, the Queen's English proper, but he would speak Fanti also mm. very well. Mm. You know, he was a mm. cultured person mm. in every sense of the word. And so it was just a delight, you know, assembly, school assembly, you know, I mean, he would be speaking his English and then he would break into some Fanti to explain, explain. something, well, you know. Yeah. And, and I mean, he, he carried us with him in, in an impressive way. Mm. So to be able to defy such a person, my goodness, <laughs> At nine, <laughs> you know, I was proud of that, and I, I was able to remind him about it when he was 98. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! It's very interesting that how you enter secondary school at such a tiny age, yes. and you're a tiny little thing. Mm -hmm. You got all this attention from the seniors and everything, and I think you carried that through university as well. Because you entered law school at 16. I was 16. I was 16 when I went to Legon. And um, 
again, you know, I had wonderful mentoring, you know. People like Professor Fuswama, he wasn't a professor then, he was a senior lecturer then. But he sort of, for instance, took me under his wing. You know, people like Kofi Deanan, you know, people like Dr. Thomas Mensah. And these were lecturers who, you know, decided that they would sort of take me in hand and, and really give me access to their books. Mm. I could borrow from their library at home or in their office. Because I was curious, I was, I was eager to learn, I was eager to read about all these cases and to analyze them and to mm. engage in mm. debates about them and so on. And I think once they saw that keenness, they were very happy, they were happy with to, it. Yeah. you know, take yeah. me on. And no, I'm just bringing it up, you know, because um, I'm looking at you now and this is telling me a story that as early as childhood, really, you, you seem to have a fascination for, for role models. <laughs> you know, small boy, you have just started kindergarten, <laughs> and now you're looking at how your, your teachers go. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's weird, man. Well, what, what is it about you know, it? I mean, I, I, it must I have something to do with your upbringing. <laughs> did your... That is true. You know, my, my parents, I mean, I, I suspect that my father would have been a better lawyer than I, I have. <laughs> what I, what I was he? What did he do? My father worked for the UAC. Okay. He became a textile sales manager for UAC. Mm -hmm. And um, he was somebody who took education so seriously and wanted us, his children, to make the best of education. He and my mother made every sacrifice for mm. us mm. to take our schooling seriously. My mother was our home teacher from when we were young. I mean, she had been a pupil teacher herself. She gave up her, you know, ambitions for further education and so on. To stay home. To stay home. And teach her children. And teach us and also look after the home. I mean, my, my, my mother was, um, you know, uh, an extraordinary. She's alive still, by How God's she? grace. She's 95, going She's 95. on to 96. Wow, show her some love, man. <laughs> <laughs> and, wow. And, and I mean, I, I think that she has been the real sort of anchor. Mm. Especially since, you know, my father died, um, you know, uh, and, and... How old were you when you lost uh, your father? My father died in 1981, I think it was. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. And, you know, by then I'd come back from, you know, my postgraduate studies mm -hmm. and so on. And I was teaching in, in Legon. Okay. No, we'll get um, there, but I just, I just have to bring this up because... You know, when, when we see who you are now, now I'm beginning to understand, you know. Mm -hmm. First was the upbringing at home mm -hmm. and made important to you people who had certain moral standards, some kind of standards, as early yes, as... moral standards and also, I mean, people, you know, who had striven to... Mm -hmm you know, get somewhere. For instance, mm -hmm. my, my uncle, uh, who really, I guess, was the person who fascinated me into law. I was going to ask that. Yeah, Justice yeah. Apalu. Justice know, Apalu who, is who your was, uncle. Yes, my uncle. You know, he's actually my mother's first cousin, but they were like brother and sister because mm. my mother was born in Lagos where her mother had been a trader and so on. But my mother, you know, was then brought to live with her aunt. Uh, by by her own mother and her aunt that is my my uncle's you know mother um you know took her as her own daughter and so the two of them grew up thinking that they were actually brother and sister mm. and so there was always a closeness between them okay and so when we got to know that my uncle had come back from doing mm. law in england and he started practicing and we started interacting with him, his family, and so on. You know, that was the initial fascination mm. about law, mm. you know. Mm. And, mm. you know, I'm talking about when I was six, five, six, seven. Wow. In that it's time. getting great. Let's hold it right there. <laughs> because we have now got to where your fascination about law started. Yes. So we'll take a quick break. And when we come back, more of talking.